Chapter 15 of 19 Science Fiction Short Stories by Jim Harmon. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Mind Snake Witch! Witch! The cry was among the walkers, but he didn't bother to track it down. It was no longer a fighting word to Hammond. He wore it like a badge of honor. It tasted of brass, but it gleamed on him. A puzzled growl came from the familiar at his heels. The dog could never understand how people could hate Hammond. Lad, the dog, often asked Hammond how anyone could possibly hate Hammond, and Hammond always told him to shut up. He couldn't understand. He was only a dog. The walk ramp was crowded this afternoon with people fresh from the transmitter stations, eager to tell themselves that they were walking on a strange planet. Hammond passed among the nudists, the cavaliers, the zip-suiters, the zoot-suiters, the ivy-coated, the moss-covered, walking not only for novelty or exercise, but because he preferred to go everywhere under his own power, even to the stars. Hale and Laura saluted him a few paces away from the entrance to the station. They were a beautiful blonde couple, with brightly polished faces. Hammond didn't much like them, but he didn't feel sufficiently pressed to be rude enough to let them become aware of it. "'How goes it, kids?' he asked them. "'Couldn't be better,' Hale said. "'Of course not,' Laura added. Hammond's slate eyes moved from the man to the woman. "'Are you troubled?' "'This isn't the time to talk about it. "'Not before you and Lad transmit yourself,' the girl said quickly. "'It wasn't,' Hammond admitted to himself. "'Only now that they had let it slip, "'he would rest better knowing the whole truth of it. "'Come on,' Hammond urged. "'It's not as if I wasn't interested.' "'Hale looked at his wife. "'Laura doesn't like Wagner any more. "'Perdition,' said Hammond. "'I never liked Wagner.' She's growing up. Laura put a half-closed fist to her lips, and didn't look at either of the men, or at the dog who stood with freshly pointed ears. No, she said softly. I lost something on the last one. Gee, I wonder if the mind snake likes Wagner now. Still, it's not as if I stopped liking music altogether, or books. Not this time. Hale grabbed her arm roughly. You're sure doing a great job of getting Hammond ready for the jump. Laura's eyes clouded. I'm sorry, Ham. She looked up, smiled warmly, kissed her fingertips and placed them on Hammond's lips. Companion's code, huh? He took her hand and for the moment liked her. Okay, honey, I guess even a witch squeezes in under the wire for that. The young team was abruptly embarrassed. Oh, well, witch... "'Hale said depreciatingly. "'What does Cargo know, anyway?' "'Hammond laughed and scratched Lad's ears. "'They know I'm a witch, but it has its advantages. "'I don't have to worry about Lad losing his taste for Wagner. "'A dog doesn't have that much to lose. "'If it comes to that, he's just gone.' "'Laura shuddered delicately the way of a watered flower. "'How could you stand to lose a companion with so little feeling?' I've lost three companions, and got myself and my cargo into port. They were only dogs. Hale looked at him sharply. But you were companioning with them. It must have been, he selected a word, difficult for you. Don't absorb the cargo superstition about witches and their familiars. They have fogged even dirty ideas. They were just dogs to me, like Lad. A dog, that's all he is. "'Gorda said in a manner designed to explain the thing patiently to Hammond. "'Lad is a dog. "'Why do you emphasize the point now?' Hammond demanded. "'The companion sat on a seat formed from a single S-shaped plastic surface. "'Hammond studied the bulk of Gordas, coordinator of transmatters, "'who sat hulked in his utility chair in the bubble office overhanging the city of the sea, "'on the world of Lanola.' Hammond was comfortable, cooled, relaxed, amused by the light play of sensory electron music, and aggressively unhappy. Gorda sat in his great chair, patting the hair on the back of his left hand with his right palm, as if the fist were a sleeping kitten. At Hammond's feet, Lad's neck muscles quivered uneasily. 
"'Your record, Hammond,' Gorda said at last, "'is a good one. "'How could it be better? "'I've never lost one member of a cargo. "'But you have lost three companions. "'Familiars, dogs. "'But it shows weakness.' "'Harmon's face heated. "'I never show weakness.' "'Not your weakness, my dear boy,' Gorda said in exaggeration. "'The weakness of the witch-familiar relationship, "'the weakness of witches as companions and all. "'Don't take it personally.' "'Hammond leaped to his feet. "'Lad's muzzle gleamed white. "'Not take it personally,' Hammond cried. "'How else can I take it? "'You are questioning the worthiness of my profession, "'of my way of life.' You question the honor of many of my friends, my associates. Witchery is an ancient profession. My grandmother and uncle were witches before me. Witches have an unparalleled record of service to transmatters and to the human race. How dare you, sir? Gordis waved a fat hand in front of him, laughing up and down the scale. No, 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 peace, please. "'You have no need to plead so strongly for the case of witches. "'You don't have to be a witch, you know, Hammond. "'You're good enough to be a regular, full-fledged companion. "'The reason you get so many of your cargo through "'is that you, in the most literal sense, companion them all. "'It would be possible for you to use a fellow companion on your jumps "'instead of a familiar.' "'Hammond sat down, no longer angry or energetic.' "'No, no, it wouldn't be possible for me to do that. "'I can take people on an occasional jump for high pay, "'but I couldn't stand the same kind of contact, "'day in and day out, with another human being. "'Pay doesn't come that high.' "'Gordis gave another laugh and killed it sharply. "'And there you were a few moments ago, "'bragging about all the service witches had been to the human race, "'and when we get down to it, "'Turns out you hate the human race.' "'Hammond tasted the inside of his dry mouth "'and longed for a way out. "'I don't hate it. "'I just can't stand it. "'There's a difference.' "'If you say so. "'But tell me, do you like your fellow companions, "'or even your fellow witches, "'any better than you do your cargo?' "'No,' Hammond admitted. "'Good. "'Then we can stop this foolish talk "'about the witch's service to mankind.' since you don't give a damn about either witches or mankind. You care only about one witch. Your interests are entirely self-interests, correct? Yes. Good. Better. Now I suppose you are not entirely satisfied with the benefits you now receive as a witch. You would like more money, pleasure, power, prestige. You have ambition, greed, hunger, desire? Yes. Fine. I didn't think you had altogether ceased to be a human. Then I can tell you that the transmitter service has to perform its most important mission, and you are thought to be the best man for it. Most important mission, said Hammond. Best man? Gordas became happy. Those are questions, but I can't tell you the answers. Not yet. First, you must promise us the added protection of taking a human companion for this assignment. Why should I want to do that, Gordas? Because I have promised that you would, and I never fail. Hammond stood for the second time. Sorry, not good enough reason for me. Gordas's face splintered into confusion. But as your superior, as your coordinator, I order you to take a human companion for this assignment. Gordas. "'Hammond said. "'You were once a companion yourself. "'When I was younger, while my wife was alive. "'Then rescind your order or I'll kill you, "'under the code, in a duel.' "'Gordas sneered. "'I have never been beaten.' "'Obviously,' Hammond said. "'He didn't point out anything about his own status. "'No. "'It was a final thing. "'Are you armed this instant?' The coordinator shook his heavy head. Then I plead grievance and choose weapons. Appeal? The other shrugged. Choose. Hammond was breathing deeply and regularly in preparation. Before this is closed, I want to remind you that the law and the code both state that no one can interfere in the relationship between a team. Doesn't apply, Gordas said. 
The Act of 97 recognized the companionship of witches, but it did not extend the privilege to familiars. Naturally not. You are a companion, and I could not separate you from a human companion, but I can order you to break from lad. That isn't just. I know, but we're talking about law, not justice. Do you wish aid from your fellow companion? Hammond asked. In later years, I have often wished for it, but my formal reply, no. Then, Hammond said, I name our weapons as the body. The time, this instant. I can kill you easily with my bare hands, and Lad will help with his teeth. An eyebrow-hedged ridge of fat above Gordis's eye angled. Use the dog and you'll get in trouble. Not before a companion's court. But if you so state your preference, I will only use my own body. Hammond, about this matter, the coordinator said. I'll think about it. An hour, Hammond said, and turned on his heel. Hammond, Gordis called out. Hammond looked back to face a level destruction gun. You know the code, Gordis explained. The challenge wasn't withdrawn. You struck the field. A coward may be killed by any weapon. You are too modest, Hammond told him. Gordis smiled and fed the gun into a compartment of his utility chair. I only want to prove a point. I can kill you any time, anywhere. No one can beat me. Can they? Can they, Hammond? The sweat stung Hammond's palms so hard he could almost taste the salt in it with his fingers. I'll do it. Gratitude is a part of honor. Yes, the code. You do believe in that. You haven't asked me yet who your human companion on the jump will be. Who? Hammond asked. As you yourself pointed, I still come under the code myself. I agreed to take a human companion. "'But I did not agree to take Gordis himself,' Hammond explained to his wrist phone in the clove outside the coordinator's office. "'I think it's a terrible thing,' Laura said. "'But why don't you jump with him, Gordis, I mean?' "'I hate him,' Hammond explained. "'Oh, sure, I guess I do, too. I never thought about being a companion with him. Oh, oh, hail swimming in now.' Aside, "'Over here, darling.' Ham's calling. From afar. Who? Aside. Hammond the witch. Why didn't you say so? Into the phone. Hi, fellow. What can we do for you? You can do a lot for me. For you, huh? That comes high, you know. What'll it be? Hammond retold his story and finished with, That's why I called you to. I need a human companion. Anybody other than Gordas. A slithering voice, then faint but distinct from Laura. I couldn't do it, and I can't let you do it. Afterward, whichever of us, it would be as if I were no better than a dog. Hammond stared ahead of him at the clove wall. Ham, Hale said. Why did you come to us with this? You were friends of mine, Hammond said. No. No. We aren't friends of yours, Ham, Hale said patiently. We're just acquaintances of yours. We'd like to help you out, but not enough to split our team for you. Surely you've got some real friends, people you look better to than us. Hell, man, don't you know what a friend is? Hammond thought of it. I suppose not. But there must be someone, Hale said in embarrassment. A woman. I know a woman which, on another world, we make love together sometimes but I know her only well enough to know better than to ask favors of her. There are lots of witches, Hale said in nervous exasperation. One of them is bound to companion with you on a thing like this. Ham touched his fingers to his wrist. I think not. No other witch is going to help me set a precedent to put them out of the trade. But the code, Hale said furiously. Surely you can count on your fellow witches under the code. Why? I couldn't count on my fellow companions under the code, said Hammond, and pressed his wrist phone into silence. Hammond stepped from the clove back into Gordis's office to find a lovely golden woman groveling at the coordinator's feet. The coordinator was smiling at the pleasure of the thing. What's this? Hammond demanded. Cargo, 
Gorda said. Is she ill? Mad. Then she can't be transmitted. No one could hold together a disintegrating personality in transmission, Hammond said. It will be difficult, unprecedentedly difficult. That is why it will take two of us acting as companions to bring her safely to Earth. Why is it so important that she get to Earth? Ask her, Gorda suggested. Hammond glanced down and saw a lad nosing pointedly at the woman. Often he forgot that the dog was constantly at his side. His eyes lifted up to the woman. She had fine features, impressive blonde hair, and she was wrapped in a frazzled blanket. Indigo rubbed away to white threads here and there. "'What is your name, woman?' Hammond asked. "'I know what it is.' "'Of course you do,' he said sharply, "'but I don't.' "'I know you don't. "'There isn't that much to know, is there?' I know everything, she confessed humbly, honey eyes down. Hammond whirled to Gordas. What do they want with her on earth? The coordinator gestured eloquently. She knows everything. Do you think they know everything on earth? Don't believe propaganda. There are things she can tell them. Hammond looked again to the creature huddled on the floor. What could she tell anyone? There are words buried in any conglomeration of letters. Confusion is the basis of all codes. There is always a cipher for any code. Hammond exhaled. Never mind. What do I care what they want with her? All right. I'll try to take her through. You don't want me to use the dog? No, it won't do. Then let me take her alone. I could do it this once. Negative. Besides, need I remind you that you have already graciously agreed to take a human companion? And, Hammond said ponderously, I can't get any companion other than you to go with me. You can't? Sad. But why wouldn't I be acceptable? I hate your soul. No doubt, Gorda sighed. But I believe you said you hated all people. I can't stand people. Only some people especially do I hate. I see. But surely it is only a small difference in degree, not kind, between the contempt and aversion you hold for humanity at large, and that which you hold for me. Surely that difference is too small to cause you to break your word, given under the code. I suppose it is. The words tasted bad in his mouth. Very well, I'll transmit with you. Of course you will, the coordinator said smoothly. Are you ready to transmit now? Of course we are. Hammond stood within the platform diagram with Gordis and the woman. Beyond the boundary stood the technicians, one at the control mosaic, the other holding the neck of Ladd, who suffered it under orders. "'Wiggle away from the mine snake, citizens,' a technician called. A native, Hammond thought. He had never been in transmission himself. No one who had ever joked about the mine snake, or rarely even spoke of him. Hammond looked around him, slate eyes, chalking the outline of the diagram in which they stood. It was only a rectangle, but shouldn't it be rather a pentagram? From the time of Aristotle, the populace equated science with magic. Wasn't the diagram only a sign to conjure the demon, spade him, to do the boon of transporting his servants across the void without decay of time? No. Instantaneous transmission of matter wasn't magic. It had always been a part of folklore as teleportation, but just as machines had been made to duplicate the legendary feats of human extrasensory perception, a machine's made to let men speak over great distances to duplicate the strange voices of mystics, and machines made that would indeed show strange visions over vast expanses. Science had made the trance matter for null-time object displacement. Transmatters were a logical, progressive, theoretical implementation. If electrical impulses could create patterns first in sound, then in light, it followed relentlessly that some day some form of impulses would be found to recreate matter. Energy and matter were only different forms of one unity. Fortunately, matter duplication had come before matter transmission. As the researches of Phillips established, an exact duplicate is not the original. A duplication of a man is only a duplicate, not the original, 
unless the elan vital the spirit the soul is transmitted for it cannot be duplicated a duplicated man is a perfect robot capable of memory and learning and developing into a human being in time but it is not a human being immediately and it can never become the original of the duplicate every human viewpoint is unique and irreplaceable duplication of matter was uneconomical the power outlay was too great the equipment too costly to build and operate so transportation by transmission was investigated again it was too expensive except for very great distances trips of light years to worlds established over the generations by the spaceships which had reached virtual light speed and could not go beyond it personalities of transmittees got lost among the stars transmitted poets arrived with a dim itch for a brutal fight due to some residue of glandular acid from a parting insult affecting their birth trauma on the new world great conductors solidified hating music competent engineers were imported with an infantile urge toward lyric verse and the companions came into being as a profession men with will power psionic abilities strength of character you could call it what you liked depending on your profession your politics your religion at any rate men and women who could hold human personalities together on the long instantaneous voyage through null space but some personalities drifted away or some darkly superstitious people suggested were they sucked away they were personalities in transmission were being captured by an intelligent entity unimaginably vast in size which some believed used the movements of galaxies as the synapse responses of its brain it was a vast entity but not a very intelligent one due to the square of signal decay and noise over light years moreover it was psychopathic from contact with human minds it had decided it was or would become it was obviously confused on the point the god of the humans it proposed to do this by eventually incorporating all intelligence into itself but seemingly only intelligence in transmission were soft enough for the mind snake to get a hold on the companions were harder shelled but the mind snake grew stronger and companions began traveling with other companions as teams to resist the mind snake and there came a class of companions who did not need help of any other man or woman but only a touchstone of reality something familiar of earth the mind of a dog or a cat or some other animal familiars so was born the core of witches and here hammond wondered was this where witches came to an end he looked at the bulging head of gordas he couldn't see inside maybe there would ultimately be men who could but he could only contact other minds when they were taken off the level of matter and energy and placed in null space where there is no space there can be no barriers there was nothing but confusion in the woman's mind if he touched it nothing but boredom and routine in the minds of the technicians hammond's eyes moved to the dog he suddenly decided lad looks sad but dogs have human facial muscles and it would be impossible between a man and a dog for one to look into the other's mind while they weren't in transmission uselessly he permitted himself to wish lad was going with him the heavy shoulder muscles of the dog ripped him free from the technician's grasp and lad threw himself across the diagram line as the coordinates of the transmatter phased transmission no time no space hammond felt an overblown wave of force how's that for power gordas demanded it came as words to him as communication between people had come to him all his life deaf mute companions had told him communication and transmission came to them as hands and fingers feeling of words you have never had a real companion before have you gordas asked you never felt real power like this before power i've heard members of the cargo scream as loud from terror and horror we don't scream in transmission coordinator let the snake sleep power the coordinator repeated 
I always held my cargo together with power. When you were a companion, the snake wasn't as strong as it is now. Quiet, please. Hammond felled out for his familiar. A tail wagged somewhere. A head cocked to one side in puzzlement, concern. What wasn't a hand petted that which wasn't a head. Just us, just the two of us, to see after the woman, Gorda said with a sneer in his voice. Didn't he know about Lad crossing the diagram? Hadn't he seen? You sound as if you were about to suggest we team up and rape her. It's hardly practicable here. But that's it, Hyman. That's it. I want to rape her mind. Go away, Gordas. I don't believe you. Nobody really makes a career out of being that swinish. My profession is power, Hammond. I find your attitude unprofessional. Hammond reached out for the girl. What do you want from her? She knows everything, Hammond. Don't you want to know everything? No, Hammond said. I'd never be able to remember it. The girl was retreating from them. Had she been snagged by the mind snake? No, only drift. Hammond threw an anchor into her, braced himself against his familiar, and pulled. She came apart at the seams and flew off in all directions, gibbering. He raced after all the pieces of the woman at a practiced, steady trot and gathered them all in. He made a rough boundary and compartmentalized her. For an instant, he looked through the jumble that was her mind. Sensuality, sloth, greed, hate, envy, pride, hunger, death wish. It was the usual human pattern well enough, but they were letters that spelled out no words. It would be impossible to find any information in that psychic junk heap. Deftly, Hammond turned Gordas back on. Must know. You'll have to help me, Hammond. Why must I? Simplicity. You must. We stay here until you do. You can't close the transmission without me, and I will not do it until you help me pick the woman's mind. We can wait forever until you decide to do as I order. There is no time here. Gordas was a blind old man stumbling in the dark. Hadn't he seen Lad join them inside the diagram? He probably wasn't even aware that Hammond had the woman under tow. Listen to me, Gordas. That about there being no time here is a mathematical abstraction. Practically, it has its limitations. There is some flow of some kind of duration here. Otherwise, our questions and answers would come at the same time. What are you trying to teach me? Gordas demanded. I was a companion before you were born. But then the mind snake wasn't so active or so powerful. If the duration of our transmission is too long, he'll get a clear fix on us. And that will be that. I'll risk that. Will you? No, Hammond said. You're a fool out here in transmission. You don't know what you're doing. What do you expect of me? Link with me, companion, as you should. Help me gain her knowledge. Hammond knew that he was being asked to help gain access to information intended for the Federation authorities on Earth. But he rarely thought of himself as a Federal, and he knew very few words would allow extradition of him on a Federal charge. At the moment, he was mainly concerned with saving himself and his cargo from the mind snake. As distasteful as it was, Gordas was a part of his cargo, and a man had to have a few ideals. Gordas was not qualified to be a companion after the generations of growth of the mind snake. He was only a pitiful fool now. How long before the snake gets so big I will not be qualified? How long before no one is qualified? How long before the snake comes out of null space and stalks the planets? Hammond shrugged and joined Gordas. They struck for the mind of the woman. Her name, they warned, is They found that out, and, incredibly, more. In some way, Gordas's mind paralleled the girl's. There was much of a kind about them, and Gordas could piece together the fragments of her identity. But then he was reaching down for something, and he pressed a digitated it up and out of sight. Hammond realized that Gordas had succeeded in getting what he wanted and in keeping it from him. 
he was less of a doddering old fool than he appeared what was that hammond demanded what did you take he tried to shake it loose from the coordinator let go of me gordas cried out in immaterial indignity hammond released him completely gordas screamed soundlessly as he retreated toward infinity shall i catch you hammond asked the scream changed in pitch the witch brought him back you stayed gordas said somehow you stayed that dog somehow you've got your damn familiar with you haven't you witch no hammond lied fluently only feeble minds like yours require a contact shall i tell you something about witches the familiars are a deception we don't need them at all we are lone wolves wolves are you so now i know what your grandmother before you was hammond laughed and sobered what did you take gordas he demanded what do you know about her asked gordas her name is isadel isadel vanderlice i've heard of her somewhere hammond said hesitantly a great theoretician the coordinator explained sullenly probably the first authentic female genius of the race of man on par with plato shakespeare newton einstein what theory of hers were you after hammond pursued a method of destroying the mind snake you want to take the credit from her i only want to take the theory from her hammond you mean you don't want the mind snake to be destroyed you are afraid its destruction would mean the end of the companion corps which you had not at all i only want the theory so i can reverse it once you know how to destroy the mind snake you also know how to create one you see i intend to become another mind snake one who knows too much of destruction to ever be destroyed listen carefully gordas hammond said with infinite care you are ill you don't know what you're talking about it can't be done the ultimate dream ultimate power it's pure psychosis gordas is it watch how easily i begin to grow i have the woman's mind now it was true the poor mad genius woman was gone stop it coordinator you don't know what you're doing hammond tried to reach him that's it that's it come ahead my boy i'm becoming a mind snake now i am a mind snake come ahead let me swallow you next you fool hammond broadcast you are the mind snake now don't you think anyone's ever wanted power before won't you let yourself remember how it was when you were a companion this is how it always happens you've let yourself be swallowed by the snake you ran right into its jaws no gordas thought furiously i and the snake digested the tiny egg in its gullet and i blurred and was washed over by all hammond struck at it in anger and humiliation and terror and it retreated with frictionless speed the snake took something with it it took gordas and it left that part of the woman isadel that he had been able to capture but the part of isadel matched by gordas's mind was jerked free she was freed of hate anger lust she was left an impossibly ideal woman all mother sister lover against his will by immutable laws of nature hammond fell monstrously in love with her hammond was among the first companions or witches to join the suicide squadron he did it to protect isadel and her descendants for all time to come and he did it in an impotent fury at his reason for doing it the companions transmitted in droves to abolish their profession they transmitted against the mind snake the federation on earth had made use of isadel's theories they were only a formal mathematical statement of what had always been known destruction reaches a critical mass and destroys itself by turning against itself where hammond had refused to join one human mind he joined countless ones in a huge drive against the snake they became one with each other and they became one with the snake and the snake turned on itself and destroyed itself and them and they turned on themselves and stopped 
they hung together for an unmeasurable time and broke apart they were a super entity like the snake but where the snake had been mad they were sane they drifted through the haze of twilight and broke apart their hands gliding away into the shadows hammond was gloriously happy he had never been happy before and he was not at all sure he liked it jobs are so hard to find these days isadel said her lovely face brightly saying what will you take up darling there's still a need for companions and witches he explained there seems more of a tendency for members of the cargo to drift away than ever the mind snake at least gave them something to resist a foothold of friction now there's nothing nothing to do but drift 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 people in transmission will need companions for a long time to come i need a companion lovely isadel said his heart leaped ridiculously but not a witch said gorgeous isadel pain very great physical pain i love you priceless isadel went on how could i help it i am a woman and i love the father image you are my father symbolically fortunately not biologically you held the sane part of me while gordas dragged off the unsane part you gave me this me birth i love you but i don't love your dog my dog said hammond no woman can marry a man and his dog i see said hammond seeing it all and living you could see everything about yourself and live it wasn't easy but you could do it especially if you had the training and experience of being a companion or a witch it would kill lad to separate him from me for long you know hammond said isadel's beautiful eyes misted and she said in all her infuriating gentleness then it is impossible for us if we have to destroy a living he's just a dog he pointed out i would wring his neck cheerfully if it would do any good but it wouldn't isadel looked sad and brave and wonderful don't you see isadel it's impossible for me to do the right thing if it wasn't lad it would be another dog and if it wasn't a familiar to make me a witch it would be something else to make me different because i am different i have to live with that among the right people i am the left man so he left her and walked out of the floating gardens onto the walkway and lad fell in at his side and he listened without anger to the hushings and keenings of the crowd which which end of chapter 15